I'm joined now by Gala Riani. She's an analyst at IHS Global. Hi. Hi, Mark. Just a quick question on the back of what Lara was saying there. Do you see a revival in protests in Iran on the back of what's happening in Egypt? We're not going to see, see the same types of, of protests in Iran that, that, we're, that we've seen in Egypt and Tunisia and elsewhere. The opposition in Iran uh, really hasn't been as active uh, for a number of months or even a year, uh, I'd say, uh, in, in, for, for many reasons. Um, it's been brutally oppressed. Um, and it's really learnt that uh, the means that it once used haven't really been effective in, in shifting this regime in, in any way, really. In other matters, pressure on Iran from the international, from 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 international countries, um, Aon executions this this Absolutely. this Dutch citizen or Iranian Dutch citizen, and uh, the trial of these four Americans, three Americans, as well, three Americans yeah. as well. To talk to me about executions. I mean, you were in one of your reports citing a number of statistics which are incredible. It seems as if the number of executions is actually rising in Iran. Absolutely. Under the current um, government, under Ahmadinejad, executions have been steadily increasing. And most of the time the government says that these people have committed severe crimes, usually drugs-related, drugs trafficking-related. So they're claiming really that they're battling a, a really big threat, not only to Iran, but actually to the, to the rest of the world, because obviously the drug flows from Afghanistan mm -hmm. through Iran and then to other channels. But actually what we're seeing is that Iran uses executions largely for political means as well. Many political activists who have been executed recently uh, and it's really another way of, of putting that extra brutal force on the ground and suppress opposition. There's been uproar internationally. What can the West do in response to these executions? They can certainly put their foot down a lot more strongly. Uh, what happens is they, they use select cases uh, and, and, and try to raise the, the situation in that way. Uh, but actually statistics show that uh, Iran executes one prisoner uh, every other day uh, and certainly they could put a lot more pressure but Iran has shown that it's not a, a regime that is prone to to reacting to international pressure and that really is is the big problem. Meanwhile nuclear talks seem to be at a deadlock after the P5 plus one talks in mm -hmm. January ended in what seems to be disappointment. Where next for that process? It's difficult to say they ended those talks without setting a fresh date, which means we don't really have anything to look to. Um, it's unclear where the negotiations are going. There was talk of a revival of this um, nuclear uh, fuel, fuel swap, swap yeah. deal that, that didn't end up anywhere. Meanwhile, what's happening is that Iran continues to enrich uh, uranium. It continues to build up its stockpile, and its position on the nuclear issue is becoming more entrenched. How do you see this? which side is going to have to give to, to, to enable this process to, to move forward? Both sides are going to have to mm. give, but the question is, is there a political will? I think there is on the Western side. Um, there is signs that they're, they're willing to negotiate and they're changing the milepost somewhat as we go along. But on the Iranian side, the issue for Ahmadinejad's government and for Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, it really is a question of, of the core principles of the Islamic Republic, um, anti-Americanism, and such a big part of uh, the ideology of this regime, and the nuclear issue comes into this sense of independence from the outside world not taking pressure and having that independent capability, technological capability to move Iran forwards in the way that, that they want to. Gala, thanks for joining us today. Thank Gala Riani there from IHS Global Insight.